Thanksgiving. What a wonderful time to get together with friends and family and loved ones and to obsess about your continuing monitoring glucose device. Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the High Octane Dad, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father. And please like and subscribe to this video down below. Leave me your comments, and I want to keep making video and content that's important to you. I wanted to do an experiment, and I wanted to check my blood glucose level over time using a 24-hour continuing monitoring glucose device. And naturally, I couldn't think of a better time than Thanksgiving to do it because of the presence of wine. Yes, this is a wine video today. I wanted to show and see exactly what would happen with drinking wine with a meal in terms of what it would do to my blood sugar while I was doing it. Let's take a look. My mission, to study the effects of red wine on my blood glucose and insulin. My strategy, measure and record my blood glucose just before dinner eat dinner and drink two glasses of red wine. Record my blood glucose after dinner. Record glucose changes overnight. You can see here my glucose is taken just before dinner. It's 81 milligrams per deciliter. I then ate dinner, turkey, green beans, one cup of stuffing, I went very little, had a salad, two glasses of red wine, no bread, no corn, no desserts. My continuing monitoring glucose device told me at 6.07 p.m. a spike is detected. At 6.58, I hit a top spike of 107 milligrams per deciliter, or a 26 point of sugar increase. At 12.16 a.m., I crashed my glucose during the night and went down to as low as 64 milligrams per deciliter. That's a 43 point drop from the high. So what does all this mean? Well. It means this, that drinking wine was a little bit stronger than I thought it was. In fact, it was different. I expected my blood glucose level to go up higher after drinking wine. What I didn't realize is how much it was going to drop and how much my pancreas was going to release insulin to push my blood sugar level low. Now, in terms of what I felt and what I expected over the night, well, you know what? You've gone through this before as well yourself. When you consume alcohol, a few things happen. As your blood glucose goes up and then way down, when it goes low and you're releasing a lot of insulin, you're not going to sleep very well. You may toss, you may turn, you may be up multiple times throughout the night, you may be flipping your pillow because you're too hot and you might be a sweaty mess, only pulling covers up just to kick them right back off again. The nuts and bolts of the whole thing is you wake up in the morning and you're tired, you're exhausted. It almost feels as if you didn't sleep all night. Well, because guess what? You really didn't sleep well last night. And because of all of it, of course, the next day you're a zombie. And I think that leads to a little bit of the hangover effect. Now, I know you might have some questions. You might be thinking, well, of course, Derek, because you tried red wine. How would it be with white wine? How would it be with spirits? Or how would it be with beer? Well, I can't answer all of those questions right now, but what I can tell you is this. I have tried it before with vodka because knowing that vodka might not raise blood sugar level enough, or at least thinking that it might not raise it as much, I figured there wouldn't be as much of a drop. Well, that is a video for another time, but what I have found, though, is that that vodka does the exact same thing that the red wine does. It releases a tremendous amount of insulin and because of it, a terrible night's sleep, temperature regulation, a lot of insulin, and of course you gain fat the next day. Another question you may have though is, hey, what if you don't eat the food like a Thanksgiving dinner and only drink the alcohol? Would that have less of an effect? The answer, no. Not at all. In fact, it would probably be worse. See, the food, especially the fat in the food, is going to slow down the absorption of the glucose, so it won't go up as high. What I can tell you is when your glucose goes up higher, it's going to come down more. So the higher it goes up, the more it goes down. That is the yo-yo effect of it. Also, too, if you just drank and didn't eat, you'd be like a rock star. Lastly, 
And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. I am looking at this in terms of body fat as my primary goal. I don't want to gain body fat. In fact, I want to keep myself relatively lean, if not lose body fat in the process. And I wanted to see the effects of what alcohol would do. But at the same time, of course, deep sleep is important to me. I want to feel rested. I want to feel invigorated. I want to feel strong the next day and I don't want to be a zombie all day long. I don't want a lot of insulin change throughout my body. I don't want a temperature regulation issue. And of course, I want to be very clear-minded the next day so I could be productive. Unfortunately, alcohol had a stronger effect than I initially thought. I didn't think it would be good, but I also didn't think it would be this dramatic. Now, what all this means to me personally is I have to be even more strategic and conscious of when I consume alcohol, knowing full well that the effects that I didn't think were good are actually even worse than that. So once again, please like and subscribe to this video down below. I want to keep making content that's interesting and important to you. I'm Dr. Derek Alessi, the high-octane Ted, helping to unlock the superhuman potential inside every father.